Tonight, we check in on our airports. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. So I was saying to Anita Buffoni, my producer, the other day, I was saying, you know, we haven't got the new boss of the airport in here yet. I mean, it's been two years, so uh, forgive us for that. It is a central part of our economy. It is a hub for us, and it is evolving. It is growing, and there are issues that constantly surround it. We ought to check in on that, so that's what we're going to do tonight. Nice to have you aboard. Thank you very much for checking in. Obviously, it was a solemn day for America. If you had a chance to watch the funeral of... George H.W. Bush, I think you were probably moved, perhaps changed. It was that deep, I thought, on, on many, many levels. If you didn't, there's all sorts of ways to find it. And, of course, the magic of DVR, uh, which I live by, is, uh, is always something to save us from our working days when important things happen during that time and we missed them. Here's the headline, you see it, and here's uh, the latest. Remember, we tape early in the afternoon. This is what the network had at press time. The flag-draped casket carrying President George Herbert Walker Bush arrived at the National Cathedral for his state funeral. President Trump, four former presidents and world leaders packed the cathedral as America said a final farewell to a war hero, statesman, and the nation's 41st president. Mr. Bush is also being remembered as a dedicated family man who lived life to its fullest. Your everlasting The president's life granddaughters offered prayers. And your days of mourning shall be ended. A 21-gun salute paid tribute to Mr. Bush at the Capitol, where Americans lined up for hours this week to pay their respects. Mr. Bush was the 11th president to lay in state in the Capitol Rotunda. Members of the Bush family visited again last night to thank mourners for their support. Mr. Bush will be buried tomorrow in Texas alongside his daughter, who died at age three, and his wife, Barbara, who died in April. Uh, President 43 offered a very touching eulogy, no doubt, uh, held on to the end and, and, and broke up a little bit, which was certainly understandable and expected. The one thought that I had during this whole thing was the notion of the humanness of George H.W. Bush, his approach to the job, and the way he reached across the aisle. And we have all the former presidents and first ladies there, and our current president and first lady, and you're thinking, you're thinking, and this happens to all of us, by the way, when we remember people posthumously and we think about their character and we always see the glass half full, you're thinking and you're thinking, is any of this registering? Um, we shall see. Amidst this, you know, sadness is a lot of tumult. You know, Flynn, no jail time. Uh, it's just, it's just, that's just in the last 24 hours. So we'll see how that whole thing kind of plays out. Uh, in the meantime, let's come home and talk about something that is really kind of bubbling up as a kind of a pay-per-view moment for the Providence City Council. Here's the headline. This particular councilwoman who has said no in the past is floating the idea of saying yes on the Hope Point Tower. Mary Kay Harris uh, seems to be the bubble vote. Mayor Alorza vetoed a zone change to allow for the Fane Tower, the Hope Tower. You've seen that. I think we've got pictures of it, right? Uh, I see this in, in a couple of different ways. I hate to see development shot down. I hate to see when someone's got $300 million that they want to bring to the table told, no, thank you. And I also see, hate to see something sticking at the, uh, at, at the chinny chin chin of downtown looking really weird. And I just, I'm not sure, I haven't been able to visualize that yet. And so I see some of the reasons why Mayor Lourdes has said no to the zone change. Uh, Councilwoman Mary Kay Harris has a couple of weeks to decide whether or not she's flipping. And so she sits as the person who will be lobbied and lobbied and lobbied. We'll try to get her in here over the next couple of weeks to see where she is on all of that. And the weirdest story of the week and the day is reflected by this particular headline. I don't know what this dude's thinking. This is the representative from Warren, and he has a problem. His problem is, his name is Lofton Asensio, his problem is that he promised to send out a mailer, 
on behalf of fellow candidates in his district and never did. And when called on it, rather than saying, never got to it, he phonied up the documentation for having sent it out. And when that all arrived at the various other candidates who have to reflect it in in-kind contribution notes, they snuffed out that he never really did it. And so the Board of Elections is receiving a complaint from the fellow Democrats who are now calling for him never to take his seat because they feel like they have been defrauded, I guess. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Is there a crime here? I don't know. Is the Board of Elections going to be able to figure this out? They're generally pretty messy themselves. So we'll see. But we'll, uh, we'll follow this case over the course of time. I've never seen fellow Democrats say, congratulations, don't take your seat. Weird. All right, hey, listen, uh, more flights at TF Green. American Airlines, starting Miami service. Uh, that always makes all you snowbirds really happy. And West Palm Beach, doubly happy with JetBlue. And the boss, boss of the airport is here. Mr. CEO, welcome. Thank you. It is a pleasure to have you aboard. You've been here two years now. Yes. Yes. Which means in Rhode Island speak, you've barely stopped by. <laughs> have you learned that? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You were previously in New Orleans. How long were you there? Uh, about uh, just under seven years. All right. Well, they probably mm. thought that you were from there after that. But <laughs> seven years in Rhode Island, you've actually you know, taken a room. That's about it. But uh, we have a unique culture here. Have you noticed that, by the way? Uh, I think it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's a unique culture. And, uh, you know, uh, that's... I've lived in many, many uh, places around the world, and uh, they all have their beauties, and uh, I, l I love being in, uh, in Rhode Island. What's the, what's the highlight so far? Uh, I think uh, the, the, how community comes together to when there is an issue, uh, when we bring in our airlines in to, um, uh, to meet with the, with the legislative folks and the, the upper uh, leadership. Uh, it takes a uh, few minutes to gather them all. And, uh, well, that's the thing. I mean, you come from a big city like New Orleans and other places. The, the unique thing about Providence it's that in Rhode Island is that we are a city state, right? So yes. everything, every, you know, yes. I don't know if they're coming together. You're being a <laughs> diplomat, but at least you can find them all in the same spot. <laughs> you know, in, I have to say, in, in, you know, if it was Norwegian or if it was uh, 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 Allegiant or if it was uh, uh, Frontier, uh, that has been my experience, mm -hmm. and um, and I think that had an impact on incoming airlines. So uh, you can just consider me lucky if that if that's not the, the uh, norm. No. Uh, you know what? I think I think there's a a level of benignness to the growth of the airport. I, right. think, I think just about everybody wants to see yeah. it thrive. Right? Yes. Yeah, that's true. I don't true. I don't think it becomes yeah. a political football. No, it does. The no. only problems I think that occur, obviously, are how you grow and keep the people of Warwick happy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So why don't we think about and talk about that in, in some of the things that are on the legislative agenda for the airport when we come yeah. back. Stay with us. So it's always uh, a focus uh, of the airport in terms of its marketing, what it needs to be called. And we almost made a change in the last legislative session. We'll get back to that in a second. But we did tease the notion that uh, it's always a challenge when any institutional business wants to grow and needs yeah. property. Yeah. That, you know, you've got to make sure that everybody's okay with that. What's the latest with Warwick? I mean, the, you, you had a $250 million right. dollar capital thing that grew the runway already. Yeah. Do you want to grow it again? No. Okay, we're all done with that. We're done with it. Okay, so anybody that lives in and around where they are, it's good enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, as long as you got earplugs, you're yeah. good, right? <laughs> uh, I always, I always laugh at the people who not you know laugh at them, but kind of get a kick out of the idea that it's too loud. Yeah. Actually, we used to have 140,000 operations, which is a landing or a takeoff, uh, in late 90s, and now we have about 70 some. So it's almost half the noise. Um, and, and also, in the meantime, things have gotten better in terms of what sort of uh, um, aircrafts are coming in. Uh, they are quieter, quieter these days, right? Yeah. So things are much, much better. Sure. And in and, and the, and the relationship with Warwick, the new mayor, uh, uh, Mayor Solomon, great, great relationship. Mm. 
Yeah. But you're not going to say anything different. You've got work to do, and you're going to keep all these people happy. No, actually, that's, that's, I, actually I, I, I just went uh, two days ago, and I said, I want to come in, and I want to see you. And, and I went in there, and I said, just want to congratulate you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was a really great meeting. And uh, I've known him for now two years. Right. With well, he's him on the council for a long, long time. So obviously, there's, con guy. there's, con Excellent there's guy. continuity in the city of Warwick. Yeah. Uh, so the name change thing, where, yeah. where do we stand on that? So um, we had two bills. Uh, we had the, uh, the fuel uh, tax bill uh, that we introduced last uh, uh, legislative season and also the name change. The name change is um, we were talking to airlines and we were trying to market Rhode Island and the one thing that keeps coming up with, uh, with these uh, uh, airlines is that, look, we, we absolutely agree with you that your folks want to go to this city A, B, C, and D. The issue is the city A, B, C, and D, the folks from there want to go to Boston. And, and, and I'm saying, well, why? It's because they don't know you. They don't know where you're at. And uh, then uh, uh, two airlines uh, made a, 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 a request uh, for specific requests about the name change and said, well, is there something we can do there? And so, um, you know, and especially in Norwegian, uh, uh, you know, in New, in New York, uh, the governor changed the name uh, for to Stuart, Stuart Field, uh, New York International as Stuart Field. And so we were trying to see the same happen here. And uh, so that didn't go through for Rhode Island International Airport, but I think that uh, we're going to look for consensus. With, uh, with both uh, sides of the legislature and uh, see if we could do a, some sort of hybrid. Uh, uh, well, so well, the, well, the Green family's not too keen on this whole thing. You're gonna give them a hangar or something yeah. like that, right? Wasn't no, that we were uh, going to the, trans the, the Interlink, which is the, bi the big the, building the that transportation surrounds intermodal, that, that right. all of that, the train station. It's still a small all. facility. It's, a, right. it's an important facility. Yeah, it is, yeah. it is. And we, so, so we're going to look for consensus and see if we could do that. And on and on uh, fuel tax. Uh, well, hold on, uh, yeah. hold on. Let's let keep it. Yeah. So what what was the pushback yeah. uh, on on the Providence International right. or the Rhode Island International? The, I think the it was just that just like you said it was the name T F Green was uh, very important to some of the folks, and I totally understand. And uh, uh, we're looking at it from a point of view of purely, uh, uh, see. The, uh, uh, the aviation in Rhode Island has a uh, $2.6 billion economic impact. I think that our team's marching order is increase it. More non-stops, more airlines, and uh, uh, hotels need to be full, and uh, restaurants need to be doing good. And so th we see that as a marching order. So yeah. we were very focused on what would get us there. Look, I am sure that there are all sorts of complications and strategies that are involved in managing at your level. Your, your experience dictates that it's not easy to run an airport. But I have to tell you, uh, the idea that you wanted a name change seems to be the most keep it simple stupid solution to growing the business of the airport. Because if we could get out of our own myopic thinking around here, all you would have to figure out is that most people don't know who T.F. Green is in Rhode Island, all due respect to T.F. Green and his family, and that folks who are flying in would, would, are going, uh, let, me, let, me, let me look that up, T, what, you know, right? I think most people know where Providence is. Most people know where Rhode Island is, although I'll tell you a funny story. When I moved from Western Massachusetts to Rhode Island 20 years ago almost, half my wife's family is like, where's that? <laughs> it's like, uh, exit 10A, 146, take the road down there. It's a state called Rhode Island. Maybe you heard of Musquamagat, Newport. I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. So, you know, I don't know what to tell you about that one. Uh, it seems clear yeah. and obvious that if you want to grow the persona of the airport, one of the simple marketing concepts is change the name. So what's your projection for this legislative session? Well, yeah, you know, if, 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 you know, like I said, we're going to look for consensus and um, we're going to get input and, and try to work with uh, uh, um, all stakeholders and, um, you know, and, and whatever comes at the end of the day, sometimes you can do the right thing the wrong way. And that's something we would like to avoid. Was anything done the wrong way? No, I think that it's, uh, if we were to just force uh, that this is the best thing and we know better. Uh, I think that approach uh, uh, is also faulty. Uh, so we have to, 
You see, the thing is that we, we all, all of us, right, the leadership, uh, um, I mean, the governors and the, 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 the Senate leadership, the House leadership, uh, we, you know, th there, is, there, is a, there is a way of thinking to approach something in a consensus mode. And oh, yeah, what is, is it? Because they don't get along on anything. Well, you know, on, on, on this well, issue. Well, that's the Paw Sox, the biggest political screw-up we've had in a long time because they never had a meeting. But on the issue of the name, know? though, it's the issue of the name, I think that, I think that uh, um, we can get somewhere where uh, we can have our cake and eat it, too. I, I really do think so. Well, listen, uh, uh, it's clear to me that you're, you're, you're a major league guy and you're trying to soft play this thing. But uh, let me do a little bidding for you. Change the name. What are, we, what are we, stupid? You want to grow the business or you don't want to grow the business? And the public ought to wake up and recognize that this is an economic hub and we can make the Green family and the legacy intact and still change the name. The question is, is it Providence or Rhode Island International? Do Rhode Island International uh, Airport is what we went for. Yeah. Um, well, well that, that, that prevents the provinciality of everybody right. and certainly, right. you know, Warwick, who hosts, is, you know, sensitive to all right. those matters. Well, I'm with you. If you need any support, I'll go down at the State House with you. When we come back, we'll talk about the tax. Stay with us. <laughs>
tax and uh, uh, other neighboring states, 43 states are charging this tax and that Rhode Island decided that look, you have cut our entertainments between 2005 to 2015 by 40 percent and we're speaking to the airlines, right? And we had no tax on fuel and so what we're going to do to try to make you realize is we're going to impose it and in the same bill we're going to collect it and give it back to you so you know how much that is that the Rhode Island state is not charging you and that is what did not fly. <laughs> So we're not doing that, and it was an exercise of. Uh, so are you, coming, are you coming back for this, or that was just one well, time? We, one time we did it, and it it, it didn't uh, fly. Uh, the whole idea was to give it back. Look, we weren't, we weren't looking for money. We have cut. Uh, uh, this coming year, we would be cutting the 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 the, uh, the, the about twelve fourteen million dollars worth of fees to the airlines, why would we increase? Mm -hmm. We would like for, the, for, for airlines to be more profitable here than any other airport uh, in this whole region. How's that whole uh, Ireland-Scotland thing going? I mean, Do, you know, I mean, Dublin, uh, uh, we, we have seasonal Dublin, uh, uh, Shannon, uh, Cork, and uh, uh, there was, uh, um, I'm sure they were doing good in summer. Uh, and they weren't really doing well in, in winter, so they stopped them. Mm -hmm. And the reason was that uh, we still have Dublin right now in winter, but it's just cold to cold uh, right. that just didn't work. Yeah, I'm not, I, you know, if I want to go play golf, I don't need to go play golf. <laughs> I mean, it's, I've, been, I've been there enough to play golf when it's summer. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. 42 degrees and the rain is, that's, that's allegedly the, uh, the draw to go play yeah. in that weather. Yeah. But enough is enough, seems to me. Uh, what's the executive summary on, on the state of affairs at, at, at the airport? The things great. are? Things are great. And I have one message for sure. our viewers, and that is, look, in the 90 minutes drive time of PVD, there are 7.5 million people. These 7.5 million people create 40 million passengers. That's what the seats are getting bought at Logan and PVD. 40 million passengers. 36 million passengers are going to Logan out of this drive time, right? And 4 million are going to PVD. We don't like this market share, and we would like to change it. And that's why so aggressively, the leadership of the state and our board, John Sapper, the chair, uh, we're trying to change it. And, um, you know, if for our kids, this is it for me. This is my last job. Uh, and, and I just would like for things to be better for this next generation and better, better share. Short answer, what is the legitimate market share growth from 4 million to what? From 4 million to, we would like to be uh, to a 6 million passenger. I think I think I would be comfortable. A name change would help, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Yeah. Yes, Good to it see would. you. Let's stay in touch on that, okay? Yes, we would. Belated welcome to Rhode Island. Thank you. All right. Thank you. The final word when we come back, students. So last night we talked to the Ed Commissioner, flying chairs and all, about a whole bunch of things, including a lawsuit being filed against the state of Rhode Island's leadership and Ed Commissioner over the constitutional right for equity and education that qualifies our students to be able to survive and thrive in the democracy. You got that? The person suing tomorrow night. And we'll see you on the radio at 3 on WPRO. Thanks for watching and fly, fly, fly.